Women, Gender, and Technology, an anthology of texts exploring the relationships between these subjects, develops a broad and extensive map of the feminist landscape as it applies to gender and technology. More than just a map, the compilation of texts acts almost as a guide through what is revealed as a vast terrain of topics, theoretical approaches, and differentiated methodological applications. The editors recognize how research in the combined areas of science and technology studies, information and communication technology, and feminist theories represent a sort of wild west, a frontier being explored and in need of further exploration. In this sense, the compilation of texts is effectively organized as a call to action, providing detours and avenues that can open pathways of interest for any reader, again through topic, theory, and methodology. This text provides examples of many varying landscapes of academic thought, reflection, and implications. From the onset of the book, the reader is provided with the legend outlining different feminist theories and their possible approaches to issues of gender and technology. In this way, the reader is given freedom to discern and interpret which feminist theories are at work within the individual pieces that make up the whole. What is made clear throughout the entire text is the idea of these terms, gender and technology, as co-producing each other. This idea of co-production can further be seen through a subtext connected to research approach and method. Not only do gender and technology co-produce each other through practice and representation, so too do different research methods co-produce the very landscape of theoretical exploration. A quantitative approach supports the ways in which women are involved and denied participation in the technological development and the structures, that is, education, culture, and the economy, that remain historically patriarchal and the internal attempts to redefine women within technological development. Throughout the readings, however, the text moves to more qualitative analyses, employing narrative and textual investigations into the female experience of technology. The placement of these different types of analyses emphasizes the dichotomy of empowerment versus disempowerment. The quantitative methods deal with empowering and mobilizing women in being active in either redefining the relationship between gender and technology or defining something new altogether. It's more of a numbers game. Get more women involved and things will necessarily change. Qualitative methods deal more with disempowerment and how the female experience, whether individual or more generalized, is intertwined within the technological practice and representation through technology and science. This progression of method emphasizes how different feminist lenses approach women, as a united group akin to an essentialist approach, or as individual and disjointed separated by different identities of class, culture, or ethnicity, taking a more postmodern approach. Perhaps seeking to inspire the reader to undertake further exploration into the topics being presented, a certain amount of conflict arises in that women seem to be given the option to be a group of others or remain singularly other. Either way, still other. Within the discussion of representation of gender and technology through genetic scientific breakthroughs and popular media narratives, that is, science fiction stories, the authors examine how the feminine is affected through scientific development and scientific stories. The representation of the feminine here gets muddy plagued by images of women as perilously trapped by their very femininity. Technologies associated with pregnancy and motherhood reveal that femininity is controlled by patriarchal ideals, as Barbara Katz Rothman notes in her piece, Genetic Technology and Women, where genetic technology is seemingly empowering women by offering choice, in this case with pregnancy and breast cancer, but in neither case has the reason for or the result of the work been to empower or better the lives of women. At best, a narrowed understanding of choice has offered a few women a few choices in a few situations. Choice without power is no real choice at all. What stands out quite clearly are the different voices of the contributors and how their individual nuanced expressions and interpretations speak to the vastness of this map that the editors have shaped. Just as the progression of topics and methods supports the co-production of gender and technology, so too do the authors through their styles and language. The most striking aspect of this text is its demonstration of how unlimited and unrestrained this area of research must be in order to track, map, and ultimately alter the landscape of gender and technology.